My name is Palak Mandyan Pujara and I'll be your event MC for the evening. The world has evolved into one global village. The biggest role has been played by social media. Since the roles of social media have been moved from self-promotion to branding and business expansion, it is obvious the communication medium has changed as well. The new trend in video making and marketing via it. Since 2016, iVipnan is celebrating World Social Media Day. And this year, for the 7th Social Media Day Gujarat, we bring to you an impressive topic, the power of video marketing on social media. Join us and let's enroll the many booms of videos on social media. Before I move ahead, before the discussion starts, I have few instructions for all the attendees the instructions are to be followed throughout the event and they are, I request you all to keep your mic muted during the session. If you have any questions during the discussion, please note them down in the chat box with the name of the speaker. We will compile all the questions and share you all in the format of ebook. Also, stay connected with us till the end for receiving a participation certificate. I request everyone to make the session more visually appealing and interactive by keeping your video on. And moving ahead, our first speaker for the event is Adair Palmer. She is from Australia, a Facebook specialist. Adair Palmer is a Facebook specialist focused on live broadcasting and chatbots. She has a background in community development and adult education and integrates this knowledge to teach people the boons of technology in growing your business. Before I hand over the platform to our speaker, my question to Adair is, what are the different goals a marketer can define to create videos on any social media handle focusing on sales funnel? I repeat it once again. What are the different goals a marketer can define to create videos on any social media handle focusing on sales funnel? I'm giving the platform to Adair. She can continue with the discussion ahead. Thank you. Thank you very much, Halak. I appreciate that. And thank you for having me here on World Social Media Day. It's an absolute pleasure. Now, I'm aware that I do have this um, action, so if I'm speaking too fast, please let me know. I will slow down a bit and try not to mumble because I'm aware that I also do that. The question that you asked, Palak, is about the, uh, the different goals that a marketer uh, can have when um, to create videos on any social media channels. And, um, and looking at the, the sales funnel. So I've got a couple of different answers to that particular question. And I'll just start with some things that when you're creating your video and you're looking at your, your sales funnel, the very first thing that I think that's a really, really important uh, conversation that could be fleshed out way more than what we're talking about at the moment is that we need to, and this is a, a quote from, uh, from Mari Smith, my mentor and, um, and friend, and I, I do some work with Mari as well. She says, we need to think like storytellers, not copywriters. And when we're creating our scripts for our videos, for, for our funnels or whatever videos we're doing, we really do need to think about what stories we are telling rather than what products or services we're selling. So that's a really important distinction to make. And having said that, 
when we're looking at videos for our marketing funnel, there's several different types that we will make or several different, several different sort of content videos that we'll make. Um, and we'll, we'll do things for th uh, videos for things like increasing website traffic, uh, increasing brand awareness. We can um, uh, do videos to increase online engagement. So all our goals, we, if we have these specific goals uh, set out before we do our videos, then we're going to be able to storytell the content into the videos to meet the goals that we are looking at achieving. One of the really important videos that I think that we don't have um, enough of and we could do more of is improving customer education about what we do in a way that is, um, that is non salesy and offers information and advice and helpful tips that connects people with you. I'll talk a little bit more in a moment about some ideas around the top of funnel, middle of funnel and bottom of funnel as well. So one of the most important things that we're looking to do, obviously, is to increase our sales revenue. But when we do the, um, when we do these videos and putting them together into a sales funnel, the the top of funnel, the tofu, the middle of the funnel, the mofu or the bottom of funnel, which is the bofu, that's a T O F U for top of funnel and uh, MOFU for middle of funnel and BOFU for bottom of funnel. Uh, when we're putting the videos together for, for, for those, um, those goals, but we're putting them in the funnel, um, into the funnel, we need to be thinking about what we're going to do to get people's attention in the first instance. And one of the things that we do um, is having giveaways for the top of funnel. Now, this is obviously the, the primary reason. And one of the things that we, we do here is we need to know that all the social channels, they're not ours. They're not our rented, you know, we're on rented land. And we do need to be really mindful of that. And when we connect with people on social the best way to keep their connection and grow that and nurture that relationship is in our own, um, our own, on our own land, pretty much. So we we offer a giveaway or something of um, the of value in exchange for an email. Now it might be something that's a lower price, something. Um, uh, like a, a mini course or I've actually got a mini course that I'm offering now um, today and it's a free course for you to have a look at that's the top of the funnel and that's a, a small course it's all done with videos and it's around how to improve your Facebook business page so that's a uh, it's a short course it's free and that's what I would call the top of funnel. So you might have an ebook or an infographic, but I find that videos really work well because you can do a lot of explaining in videos, and you can also um, you can also uh, connect with people a lot a lot more a lot more with a lot more ease. <laughs> so the uh, the top of funnel. And then the middle of funnel. So when people exchange their email address for that thing of value that you are um, offering them, then you've got them in your email list. And that from there you will, you want to sort of think of them as in the middle of funnel. If you're doing an ads campaign, you can sort of duplicate that for people who have seen you or engaged with your videos. That's probably a whole other conversation with a whole other person, <laughs> to be honest. So the middle of the funnel is where you would uh, nurture people that are on your email list and, and nurture the relationships. And you would still add value. You would perhaps offer some, uh, some low to mid-range cost programs or, um, or services so that they can continue to get to know you. You can continue to get to know them. And then at the bottom of the funnel, you would do something like a higher priced item. So you would, well, traditionally it's been like masterclasses. So you might have an hour or a 90 minute masterclass, obviously done by video. These can be live masterclasses or they can be pre-recorded evergreen masterclasses. You can upload them into the 
appropriate software and people can access on demand and then you can upsell them into uh, to, to higher priced um, courses or uh, services. So there's a, that's a sort of um, funnel. So you've got the goals on one side of what you want to achieve and then you've got your funnel, how you actually bring people in and what you do in the various stages through the funnel. So did that answer your question, Helen? Yes, yes, sure, you did. You did it very well. So my next question to you is, how can video marketing help build a strong community? Okay, video marketing. Uh, this is a really interesting one too. It's all, it is all about, and I'm speaking predominantly about Facebook, but it's, it's the same as LinkedIn and YouTube and the other platforms, Instagram as well. But I focus on Facebook because that's where, that's where my audience is, uh, but the principles that I talk about are essentially the same. So when people connect with you, the first time they see you, there's, there's usually around 22 touch points. It's quite, quite possibly more now. And a touch point could be anything from um, seeing you on a video uh, to having a message in their inbox, like they're messaging your page or, you know, um, seeing you on someone else's page, talking to somebody on a, a live video, they might see some of your, they follow your page, it's another touch point, they might see some of your content come down their, their home news feed, they might see, they might sign up for your giveaway, they might see you, they'll see your emails come in, each of these is a, a touch point along the way. So people need they traditionally around 22 touch points, and although I suspect it's more now because there are so many more people and we're so spoiled for choice in the amazing um, uh, the amazing variety of things that are out there. But what I'm suggesting is that video, if, you, if you're just relying on blog posts without video or if you're relying on... Uh, image posts or link posts without video, you're actually, I think, where the video does shorten that touch point requirement. So, and this is only my own intuition talking. I'm not saying that this is anything scientific. It's just, I'm, I'm just thinking that video does shorten that view, um, that, that length of time before people will feel like they know you, like you and trust you enough so that they will reach out and purchase something from you. So when you're doing your video marketing or your, your video presence, presence, whether it's to build your brand awareness or whether you want to, um, whether you want to make sales or whether you want to uh, educate your customers, there's the, we'll go back to question one, the answers in question one. Uh, I like to focus on Facebook and particularly in Facebook groups. So you can do, if you've got a group of people that you are, uh, that you know that you've got together, that love your staff, this is where, and it's particularly relevant for Facebook, is where Facebook is focusing on for community building. And when you say, when we talk about communities, we can talk about pages and um, Facebook groups. We can build communities on YouTube and definitely on LinkedIn as well. But like I said before, I'm focusing on Facebook and Facebook groups specifically. And in the Facebook groups, you can do a range of different things and encourage people to interact and engage. Now, this is probably the key thing to building communities. It's not, it's not a one-way trans transaction is not it's not transactional at all it's uh, it is a more of a process and it's definitely a two or more way street so we want to we we want to, I think the old marketing was we give out the information and expect our our potential customers or clients to receive it but in this world and marketing with video and social media we are actually encouraging a two-way conversation or a multi-way conversation, just like we're doing here tonight, today, <laughs> this afternoon. So 
So but I have you know a question like uh, uh, you are like saying now that uh, we can uh, make a very creative content regarding the business and the uh, services to make the community strong. But what happens if the person or the brand who a particular person who is uh, identifying his her brand is camera shy he is, or he or she is not able to come mm -hmm. up in front of the camera to showcase their brand or product any yeah. tips for them yes yes it's a, that's a really good really good question and and i think that there is some there is a lot you can do and if, if you are camera shy and i have to admit i when i first started i was terrified of video so i would i would so I'll get my phone and I'll talk about that in a minute, but I would put a little sticky note on my um, on my phone with three points and I would look at the phone, I would look at the sticky, you know, the three points on the sticky note and I would just practice and I would just do recorded videos and then I would delete them and I would record videos and delete them. When I coach people, I do help people. I'm actually a qualified hypnotherapist and NLP master practitioner, so it's neuro-linguistic um, programming. And I do actually help people create um, self-confidence in themselves so that they can do lies. So there's a process we go to. If we can't do that, because that's the ultimate and that's what we really, really prefer to be able to people to be able to connect and engage uh, through video. If you can't pre-recorded video where you can do 150 takes if you feel like you need to, and the other is you can do still images and audio as well. So there is there's ways that you can, uh, and I think Facebook have just canned the audio option on their um, uh, on their podcast option on on their platform, which is a bit of a you know a bit disappointing. But uh, you can actually you know sort of still upload videos, or you could do pre-recorded. Uh, videos which are just an image or a series of images with you talking as well so there's different ways that you can go about it but I highly recommend if you're terrified of going live or you're terrified of video it's absolutely possible and entirely worth working through those feelings because the people need your message and sometimes I do tell people I do a bit of tough love and I tell people that stop being selfish People need to hear your message so you can help them, <laughs> and uh, and, it, and it usually works. So we've had quite a few success stories. So right. yeah, yeah. And my uh, last question to you for today would be: What are the essential tools or aids that uh, you know would be helpful to all the video creators and for the contents to make a great and awesome video content on all this any you know social media platforms? Okay, beautiful. I love that question. Um, I've been uh, live streaming now, I think since Facebook you know, said live streaming was available, which is quite a few number of years ago now. And I've always advocated that you know, we have a production studio in the palm of our hand here. And I think there actually are more mobile phones uh, in the world than there are people. So, so we we do we have at our disposal some a, a really really powerful studio. Um, we do you can if you want to get fancy like you can get these like I've got I've got a whole range I've got this I've got a Sony DSLR vlog camera I've got you know these types of things but really if you're starting out and you want to create video you want to do live broadcast or pre-recorded video, you use your phone, use your phone because that's you, it's there and everything's in it. If you want to do some basic editing, uh, you can, there's there's really inexpensive apps you can use. Yes, I just, I'll wind up in a moment. I just wanted to just say that if you're, if you're doing things like reels on Facebook you can if you don't even need to have another editing app you can do it all inside of the, the baked in the reels app on Facebook yeah and right. Instagram and TikTok so uh, so video editing is really easy these days 
right, right, right. Uh, thank you so much, Adair. You have taken us to a great insight. It was wonderful knowing about, you know, the complete marketing about the fund from the sales funnel to the tools and kits we can uh, use for the great uh, video content. Mm -hmm. And it was wonderful uh, speaking with you. And thank you for being available for our community at such time differences from India to Australia. Thank you so oh, my much. My pleasure. My pleasure. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Most welcome. So, moving ahead with our second speaker, we have Ami Savla Hemani. Uh, she is a social media consultant and runs her own training institute. She has trained 7,500 people till date, catering to training the uh, needs of many corporate clients, including the French tourism. Before I hand over the platform to our speaker, my question to Ami is, what are the different video types a marketer can consider while making a social media marketing strategy? Can you give few examples of different types of videos for marketing? Uh, Ami, uh, can you uh, hear me? Yes, can you hear me? Yes, yes. Okay. Welcome, welcome. Thank you, Palak. Thank you, first of all, Bhautik, uh, for inviting me for this. Uh, a very, very happy social media to, to all our audience. Thank you, Adre. You, I think you really uh, set up the things and it's really great content from your end. Uh, hi from us, from India. And thank you for joining today. Uh, so, little bit about video marketing and the aspects of videos. Uh, to be very, very honest, Adre has lastly rightly said that just your smartphone is something you need. You know, so today, if you see on social media, you have a 14 year old to a 20 year old to a 60 year old to a 70 year old to a mom sitting at home to a person sitting in the a doctor sitting in the clinic. Everyone is having a phone. They're creating video content, you know, sometimes just sharing with friends and family, but also sometimes sharing it on social media for fun or even for some purposes. So yes, videos is something which is uh, going very, very viral these days. And the content that you, of course, create for videos is, of course, very, very important. So when you are creating a social media strategy, it's important for you to understand what is the video that you want to create. So of course, you will have your Instagram lives, your Facebook lives, your LinkedIn lives, you have your carousal videos, you have your Instagram reels, you have your IGTV videos, you have your YouTube videos. So there are tons and tons of ways of how a video can be created. And trust me, it can be used in so many different ways uh, that, you know, you can't even comprehend. So, you know, uh, like uh, I know of one of my friends, she's a doctor and she's also, uh, you know, she loves getting dressed up. So she went somewhere and her husband, uh, you know, just clicked a nice video of her that actually put it up and that reel got her like around 1.2 million views, you know. So just with a smartphone, they created an amazing video where they are actually gone and now they are thinking of making, uh, she's a doctor of course, but she's wanting to become a travel influencer. So just imagine a views that gave her that much. Now she's thinking to become an influencer so that, you know, such things can happen. So... When you're actually creating a video strategy, there are like a teen number of things uh, that you can, uh, uh, you know, actually be doing. So as I said, from your reels to your Instagram stories, video content is great. Uh, again, it's very live. It's very, you know, it's connecting. People can connect the emotional aspects of it because it's talking. There are models there. People can relate with them. You know, there's a storyline behind it. So that's when uh, from the start to end, if you want to take a person through a journey, that's when a video will really, really be helpful. And of course, when you're creating a marketing strategy for your product, for your brand, taking them through a process, taking them through a journey about a product or about a service, you know, is, is it going to, it's, it's really going to be helpful for you uh, when you actually do that. And as I said, you, what do you need? You just need a smartphone, you need a tripod, maybe all the editing things are also there in your smartphone, maybe one or two apps here and there. And once you know these hacks, you are on your own. And now people have started monetizing it. You know, like I know this lady, she's a food artist, okay? So what she used to do is, uh, of course, she didn't think that she will do something with that. So she had a two-year-old child, but he was a fussy eater. So he would not eat healthy food. So what the mother would do, and she was a food artist. So whatever food she used to create, she used to make it in a nice way. For example, she would make a snowman out of rice. 
or you know she would make something really cool out of say cucumber and then she would present that to the child now the child felt it so amazing that he would actually want to you know kind of consume that so now what this lady started she started recording this video whenever she used to make it the journey of it the recipe and then the entire thing of it just as i said just a homemaker she just would take it take a video of it put it up on social media Today, see, she's a very, very big food influencer in India. There are big, big food brands who reach out to her and who tell her because she now has so many moms who look up to her, who look up to her recipes. You know, so much just something as simple as which she even didn't think that this could actually become a business. So, video content is the in thing. Ah, uh, everyone must, ah, uh, you know, try and kind of get into this entire strategy because trust me, it can really take you to places. Right. Right. uh that was great and my you know continuing with this same topic my second question would be engagement is the first step to converse uh, you know uh, conversion in social media uh can you share your thoughts on type of message a business should pass through their video content on the direct sales yes that's a great question so of course you know i always tell people there are two kind of strategies that you can use on social media but of course it's a push strategy you know keep bombarding them with your products with your services buy me i'm the best in this world my product is the best my service is the best you keep on bombarding them and you kind of push things on their face other is a pull strategy a subtle way of attracting users participants to your page to your brand building so that will it's going to take time that's going to be a process but once people buy into your thought process things are going to be very easy for you so always tell people let it be a slow process let it be a journey but always work towards a full strategy so say for example if you are if you want to if you are an amazing uh, uh you have a shop of selling sarees you know instead of telling people buy this saree you create content why should i you be buy buying this saree or so 10 ways to drape this saree or what is the material of this saree you know when you make them a part of the process when you make them a part of a journey when you make them do an informed decision you know that's when it's going to be a step ahead for you to make that sale but if you just show away the products on their face they're not going to buy it first make them feel that okay create that need you know creating that need is also very important so creating that need of course packaging it in a very very a uh, better way what is the problem uh, your service or your product is solving you know putting that up in a very very nice video format is what is going to create that so engagement plays a very important role you know so before you put up the product as every also said that informational content fun content or uh, tips content education content after they go out of your page they should be better informed they should feel that they know something more that they didn't up they know about it you know so you your page has to be for example if you are into fashion you are a fashion brand you know your page has to be something so if i want to know some details about some kind of clothes i should feel that okay this person's page should have some things about it instead of going to google i should feel that no i must go to this person's page so your page has to become a repository of information that i can garner in your field in your niche so first world on engagement build your community and gradually i'm sure people once they buy into your entire philosophy sales will happen so don't focus on sales sales will happen focus on the quality focus on making them a part of your journey that's where engagement plays a very important role i think palak you are on mute yes yeah am i audible now yes yes okay and my you know last question for the event uh, to you would be what is your take on live video streaming on video, uh, instagram facebook and linkedin and any tips for the live video content and streaming yes 100% a live is something is one of uh, one of the best ways to reach out to people like if you are have an instagram page you can actually go instagram live you know you can share your information you can keep a day every first of the month i'm going to be talking about instagram marketing you know all the topics or you can also invite experts invite experts from your fraternity in your niche people who are complementary partners to you you could do that edry also picked up the point of facebook communities you know so say for example you are a life coach you know so maybe do like a 20 minute q and a on a community that way people are going to know about you instead of telling them buy my service no first them give them a uh, uh, you know little bit about who you are what do you do give them that 10 things that they feel oh wow if the free thing was those this much if i actually pay for this is going to be really good 
so create that connect with people you know there are so many facebook communities go there get in touch with the admins do facebook lives with them or uh, instagram pe reach out to people do instagram lives with them now linkedin has also come up with a live option trust me live is something you should definitely keep into your strategy because it's something which which is live uh, you know always pre recorded sessions people are not very happy but the live may you can interact with them you can talk to them you can gauge the person's persona the brand values and it becomes more it becomes very easy for them to make an informed decision you know so start with engagement build a community go live talk to people meet them see what they have to say and then i'm sure your users are going to make informed decisions because now they are more informed they are better read they are you know they they know things in a better way and uh, you know things are just just going to be better in in the near future so yeah some some tips that i would like to uh, just end it by some apps that i have personally used because you know when you are a small business owner you don't have like big big budgets to spend on things you know you don't have a uh, uh, maybe even budgets to even outsource your work so what are some simple things that you can do so i would suggest some apps like canva in short or uh, you know you can actually just use these and you can make some really cool things like i also do screen recording i do screen recordings of of a tutorial that i want to teach and i will put that in a reel you know so people can actually see the reel see the screen recording and see the step by step method of how to do this you know so use screen recordings and use these various features uh, that these platforms gives you so use in short use canva or uh, use filmora go uh, use uh, kind master these are some really cool apps that will help you to make really cool things uh, uh, you know and for your videos and trust me you don't need anything else with your smartphone you can actually do whatever you want to do thank you ami that was really beautiful and uh, for providing us with the uh, in depth and technical knowledge which everyone many times lack in themselves or even take for granted uh, you really made it sound so easy i hope all the attendees will start implementing the tricks uh, you have provided us and uh, will uh, let everyone make their video contents so very much eye catchy for the audiences and uh, now i will move ahead with our third speaker of the event Bhautik Shet. He is a digital marketing trainer and consultant with fifteen plus years of experience. He has taught over sixty thousand plus digital marketing enthusiasts and handled over hundred plus prominent brands. Before I hand over the platform to our speaker, my question to Bhautik is: Talking more about live videos. can you tell us how the, how to leverage live video broadcasting on social media i'll repeat the question again for the audience talking more about the live videos can you tell us how to leverage live video broadcasting on social media thank you so much palak for the introduction and thank you so much adair and ami for setting up the the stage for me so that is the privilege that i can take as a main organizer that i can keep myself at the last so that my invited guest can you know set up that wonderful stage for me now uh, first of all before i answer to uh, collaboration let me tell uh, all of you that i i have followed maris smith a lot and uh, i think because i'm right now in the field of digital marketing one of the biggest reasons is mari and i want when i saw uh, there is doing uh, wonderfully well uh, as her team member i decided to invite her at least this time now maybe in the future we can also have mari with us but yeah because uh, see uh, what i have observed these uh, the industry people from us to tell me that they have always uh, leveraged the video platform a lot initially it was a recorded video then after 2016 onwards when facebook came up with this live option they started with this thing so the point is that when we talk about the live videos we have to understand that at least in last 2 years we have seen the sudden rise in the you know live broadcasting all that and if you if you don't see this last 2 years at least if you go back during this global lockdown we have started seeing that people people were doing so many live broadcasts on facebook and instagram specifically now what we are observing here at least in india that uh, it is very unfortunate to see 
that now we are not able to see the same intention and the same uh, frequency of going live. So this is one of the reasons that I believe that uh, maybe uh, people are more comfortable in the pre-recorded videos as is, it literally gives them the chance to edit and reshoot. So I believe that uh, if you if you know how to go live, if you know, if you are you know, comfortable facing the camera and the live audience, I think you should not go back. You should continue doing this. Uh, normally we see that we 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 see so many uh, digital creators. They go with this live content and live video, specifically on Instagram. But when we are talking about the marketing, we mainly focus on the the big brands and the the local small companies as well. I believe that uh, all these businesses who are using these social media platforms, they need to identify the goal to go live. So ultimately, you cannot just sit and say that, hey, I am I'm free and I don't have any work right now. Let me go and do and talk to my people. So you start doing that. Normally, it happens with the, the celebrities. They keep doing this every now and then. And they just want to connect with the audience because they believe that their audience would feel that if they are going to speak out their name while you know going through uh, the live content, even if they are going to say, "Oh hi, Clark. Oh hi, Ami. Oh, hi, Adad," so they will feel good. So, oh, the celebrity is uh, you know uh, remembering me or recognizing me through my name. So the point is, the companies they have the different goals, they have a the different requirement. So I I feel that there are several ways where the businesses can use live videos. So if you talk about the Facebook live. You should use it for the community building and that is what there is also saying it is very important that you you select certain topics that can be used to build the community on uh, on facebook and uh, you can also do certain panel discussion online i think it can be very helpful to you you know that there are se several uh, tools available uh, online uh, applications available like believe b b e l i v dot tv live tv these kind of applications are very useful that you can use and you can invite certain people to go with the panel discussion kind of thing on Facebook. You can also go uh, live on LinkedIn if you are eligible, your profile is eligible. You, you should again uh, do the certain kind of, uh, you should invite rather the industries, other people and you as a representative of the brand. You should talk mainly on the, the technical aspect of the industry. So it should be a one-on-one -on -one talk show that you need to do on the regular basis if you are doing it on the LinkedIn. And when it comes to Instagram, I personally feel that Instagram is the place where people are not mentally or psychologically ready to, you know, uh, learn something that is very serious in terms of the topic. So why not to go with some tips and tricks kind of uh, live videos that people would like to listen to your ideas, your tips and tricks and hacks. So once the brand creates that goal very clear, I think step by step they should move forward. I also uh, would like to suggest you to do live videos in the local language because see, vernacular language is some of the things that is very important. So right now, because we 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 are doing it uh, for the international audience and we are going to uh, you know uh, upload this video on the YouTube and other social media platform as well. We are going with this English language, but if at all it was only planned for the Indian audience, maybe the Hindi language could have been better. And I personally feel that so many people could have joined us only because that we have we, we might have declared that we are going to do it in Hindi language. So uh, yes, uh, in the country like India, where there are so many different languages, so many different vernacular languages, I think you should also connect with your audience because every person, it is very important that what kind of language you use because when you are you represent a non-English country. It is very important that you should connect with the people heart to heart by using their own language, go live, talk to them in your own language. I think that can be something that would not uh, uh, many would have done and they prefer to go with the English language. So that is also uh, my suggestion. Uh, and yeah, uh, if you feel uh, that you are not so comfortable, you are not so confident going live, then I think uh, you should use the premier feature on Facebook and YouTube. So guys, yes, you can uh, record your video and you can edit it, you can reshoot it again and again and again. You can show your plant, you can show your machines, you can show your products, you can talk to your clients. It can be your internal team discussion that you have to record first. And after you record, you can make it a uh, premiere on uh, Facebook or uh, YouTube. So like this, uh, you can also connect when, at the time of the premiere. So when people are watching it, 
as a premier video. You can be there, you can answer the questions, let people comment and put their questions and immediately you can get back to them with the answers in the comment section. So I personally feel that live is a wonderful thing and nobody should go uh, get away with the live. And uh, yeah, so Balak, I, I personally feel that the live video is something that what, whatever we are doing, right? This is something live, but it is we are doing on the Zoom. And uh, maybe the same kind of thing we can do on Facebook, LinkedIn, or Instagram someday. And the same people would join us. And we will be definitely consider the different goals uh, with, the, with those live videos. Sure. Thank you, Bhotik. And uh, I'm moving ahead with another question to you. Um, it is how to take advantage of Instagram Reels. Already, there are many apps and creators everywhere. Uh, what is what the business should do for you know such uh, Instagram Reel content to be promoted? Okay, so yeah, so Instagram is something that everybody might be looking for when it comes to the video. So again, uh, the first of all, the Indian perspective and not the global perspective. Uh, two years back, government of India, they banned TikTok. So unfortunately, we do not have TikTok right now. And uh, since then, Instagram took an advantage. Meta now, at that time, Facebook took an advantage of it. And in a hurry, in a very immediate manner, they launched Reels on Instagram in 2020. So yes, I assume that India was the first country where Reels were introduced. And since then, we all are using Reels a lot. But yeah, at the same time, we should be very well thankful to TikTok that has actually made it possible to the people. See, we are the country of 130 billion people. And just imagine the, the, the kind of content that can be created from this, this country. And that is what started happening when TikTok came in India. And in a very short period of time, TikTok became the number one choice application for so many uh, tier two, tier three, and the small town uh, people who, who, who might have never thought that they're ever going to do anything on Facebook. Forget about the lie. They, they were so scared that they, 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 they could not even think that they can ever, you know, record a video and uh, upload it on Facebook or Instagram as a post. So yes, that was one of the things at that time. But if you see it today, I, I feel that Reels is no more Instagram feature only. It has become the feature of Facebook as well. So you can say that if there is no, no you know, we, it won't be a strange thing to see that maybe uh, in the near future, Meta will bring the same Reels as a feature or as a, as a part of a feature in your WhatsApp business account as well. So I personally feel that uh, Zuckerberg is going, uh, uh, you know, very positively by taking the Reels to the next level and, and Reels can be the one of the platforms that will not only represent one, one particular social networking site, but it, right now it is representing two, but it can represent three as well. And now what we are seeing that you can create Reels from Facebook profile uh, on desktop, on your laptops, or you can also use your Creative Studio from your page and you can create and you can upload or you can even share your Reels. So these are the updates that uh, we have seen in the last couple of uh, weeks and the months. And it also shows that the, the R&D department of Meta is focusing on getting more people to make Reels. So they want us to create Reels. Now, what does it mean? So as we have seen uh, in the last 15 years or so that Facebook uh, was very aggressive initially to provide you the organic results. Now, gradually in 2011, Facebook started you know, uh, downgrading the organic results and that we see even today for the particular for the business pages. And uh, again, as new feature arrived in the terms of Reels, again, you started seeing a, a very good organic result on the Reels on Instagram. And that again, inspired people to use Reels compared to TikTok. And in between what we have seen that uh, YouTube came with shorts, uh, in India, we have other applications also. Chinga is there, Moj is there, Takatak is there. So India is the big market for all these players, the global players and the local players. But yeah, if you see the tier one and tier two cities, uh, the macros of India, they are the highest number of, these cities are the highest number of users of Reels compared to the, all the other applications. Uh, one of the things that we uh, all have witnessed is the huge success rate of digital creators on Instagram. So if you if you talk about uh, an individual, 
who is only representing him or herself on Instagram, promoting something uh, like uh, as an affiliation or as an influencer promoting certain products or certain services, going to the salons, going to the gyms and promoting that, their you know, salons and gyms. So Instagram is very good for them, but comparing businesses to it. Yeah, if you compare your business along with your individual digital creators, uh, and if you leave some big brands aside, I, I am afraid to say that local businesses, local and small businesses, uh, they have still not leveraged the power of this. So I believe that they should come forward and just start doing something on this. And uh, I have certain a small tip uh, if you are specifically talking about Instagram, not only Reels. So how, how to decide on your content part? If you really want to take advantage of the Instagram and you believe that your company can do wonders by using Instagram very well. So there are certain things. So guys, if you have some temporary content to show to the world, I think you can go with the up to 10 seconds uh, video creation in the vertical mode and you can use the series of such videos and just put it in your Instagram and Facebook stories. So that can you can do and you don't want that particular content to remain on your page for longer period of time. So 24 hours is good for you to show that. So that is number one thing. Decide that what kind of temporary content and I believe that you should, uh, you know, uh, create such temporary content every now and then uh, every day. So your story should be, you know, full of such series of content, not what, what others say in the earlier, uh, her statement that you have to become a storyteller when it comes to uh, the video marketing rather than just creating as a content or just thinking that I'm a copywriter and I need to do something. So that is one of the things. If you believe that uh, you are the permanent content to show to the world, so you don't want your content to only remain available for 24 hours. You want that your content should remain on your profiles or your pages. You can go and create up to 60 second videos on Instagram. Just make sure that you are communicating your message very well within those 60 seconds and just put, put it as a post. And I think uh, that you can, uh, you can take an advantage of uh, getting some organic results because Video compared to post, uh, the still images and the creatives, uh, obviously it increases the engagement rate and you want uh, algorithms to understand that most of the people are staying connected to you to, uh, via this video content and some beautiful six, up to 60 second videos uh, can help you to increase your engagement rate. And then and you know that if it is going beyond one minute and so that IGTV is always there, but we have seen the, the downfall of the IGTV as well in the last few months. So yeah, but if you are creating some video for the YouTube, you can upload it on the IGTV. And finally, if you have a, some great message to tell to your audience as a company, as a brand, uh, but you want to uh, say it in a very creative manner, then you should go and create reels on IG, uh, Instagram and Facebook. And now we see that they've increased the time limit as well for reels. I think you have so many things that you can, in a daily routine way, uh, what is, whatever is happening in your company, whatever is happening in your business, you can just shoot and you can, you can think about uh, the content in a very creative way, use some awesome background music and use some transitions. Uh, yes, uh, Ami has given certain applications. You can use some applications in short with a wonderful application. It's a very cheap as well. You should go for the paid version also. And I think you don't need to even rely on certain editors if you can start creating certain small micro videos on Instagram. So I believe uh, well, uh, that uh, Instagram Reels is a wonderful thing. And this is the right time. Everybody in any part of the world, they should focus on Reels because TikTok is the biggest competitor right now for Meta. And this is the the business rivalry that we as a marketer need to understand and we just need to see that how we guys can take an advantage. So the people who are living outside India, you have two options, go for TikTok, go for Instagram. People who are living in India, go for Instagram, focus on Reels. Yes, Parak. Right. We also have, you know, applications like uh replaced uh, to TikTok like Takata. People do use that application nowadays. Even that will be useful for uh, everyone. It's an advantage for uh, for to for be staying in this country to use that application. 
anyways and my third question the last question for you for the event is youtube as a marketing tool is very undervalued today do you have any tips to take advantage with youtube for the business growth so uh, when we are talking about the video marketing and if you are not at all talking about youtube i think it is very interesting to google itself uh See, I think YouTube is mostly used as an affiliate tool instead of marketing. And that is what people have done all this year. I think 2007 was the year when YouTube brought this concept to the, uh, of the monetization through video content. And that was a time period when hardly there were creators who used to create some videos. And that was a time when so many people globally, they took advantage of YouTube as a platform to earn money. But gradually, when the, this digital marketing itself started, uh, you know, becoming popular, uh, not only in the developed countries but the developing countries as well, people understand and uh, started understanding this reality that uh, you know, doing something on a search engine can be helpful to you. And Facebook was uh, growing like anything at that time, so people have started also understanding that if you really want to grow, you have to uh, do something uh, on search engine as well along with the Facebook kind of uh, social media at that time. And since then, YouTube came into the picture for the marketers as well. So guys, yes, it's a platform uh, 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 to earn money, obviously, through your monetization. But I also believe that YouTube plays a very important role in search engine optimization as well. So if you're a marketer, and if you can create certain awesome videos, the long videos, I think you should use YouTube uh, rather than thinking about earning money from it, I think you can think about how you can create certain good videos that can be very helpful to the people who are subscribing to your channels. And once they start subscribing to your channel, you need to keep flooding with the awesome kind of videos. So guys, uh, there can be certain kind of videos that you can create for a brand, for a company. Uh, very popular kind of videos on YouTube are how-to videos uh, that are very popular. Certain tutorial videos also you can create on YouTube. Uh, if you are a product manufacturing company, if you are uh, manufacturing some machineries or something, electric, you know, electrical items, then you can also show some product demo. Believe me, product demo are the hot cake on internet. And people, even the unboxing out of things are very important. And it, 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 it remains there. People uh, love to watch this video whenever they are confused with the products. They search for this kind of content on Google and also on the YouTube. So I think those kind of videos can be uh, very fruitful to your brand. Uh, you can you you can you can do some UGC kind of activity, user generated content videos, and why not to put it on YouTube and just make them feel that their videos are available on your YouTube channel also. So that is one of the things that you can do. Uh, you can do this Q and A series. Uh, what I was suggested earlier for the you know uh, Facebook Live and LinkedIn Live. So you can use these kind of things. This is this particular session, right? This is recorded right now and we are going to upload it on YouTube as well. So why not to do this kind of event and create some awesome content that people who are actually, right? Other was saying about the sales funnel and she said about the tofu, tofu, mofu and bofu. This is the kind of topic that is exclusively for the bottom of the funnel audience. This topic is not at all for the mofu or not at all for the uh, tofu as well. So we, we know that this video is going to uh, be very helpful to the people who are right now doing marketing on internet. They are using social media for marketing. The people, the, the small scale entrepreneurs and the doctors and the, the CA and uh, all the, you know, uh, the retailers who wants to leverage social media platform, but they're clueless. Now, this kind of videos would be helpful to them. They are going to see this video. They are going to keep this video with them. And whenever they want uh, to take some guidance, I think this video can be very helpful to them. So I think uh, this kind of videos uh, should be there on YouTube. We can also put some BTS behind the scene activities on the YouTube video. And uh, that also people would love to watch. And yeah, whenever you have some, uh, you know, you want to make some sales calls, why not to create certain videos where you are revealing some exciting offers and deals for the audience. So I believe that YouTube can be helpful for the brands and the marketers who wants to take an advantage with the longer format of the video and not only the short form of the video. Also, I want uh, this to give this advice to all of you, a kind of suggestion or tip you can say. 
uh, you can divide it into video goals in three parts. Uh, number one, why to make long videos? That should be one part of the goal. Number two, for whom to make long videos? And number three, when to make long videos? So why to make, for whom to make, and when to make. Now, why to make is absolutely targeting your sales funnel. Just, just see to it that you want to create certain videos for the people uh, who are at the middle of the funnel. You just decide for them and uh, create some you know, proper segmentation of your MUFU and just decide that you want to target this, this segmented audience only. And then just realize that what is the right time for you to publish the video on YouTube. And I think this will be very helpful to you. If you are talking about YouTube, I think uh, the keyword research becomes again very important for the YouTube. And you can also take help of certain uh, free tools like keyword, Google's own Keyword Planet tools. You can also check the Google Trends and just try to understand that what kind of search queries people use on YouTube and a search engine like Google. So I think that can be too, uh, very helpful to you. And finally, uh, to uh, conclude with all the three questions that Palak you asked to me, I think I have certain things that I have taken as a hint from others and Ami's, uh, you know, answers. I, I believe that video marketing is a lot about brand, uh, you know, uh, understanding your brand's trajectory. If you understand your brand's traje trajectory, I think it can be very, it will become very easy for you to decide on the topics of your video. Then whenever you, you place, uh, uh, it can be for YouTube, it can be for Instagram or maybe Facebook or LinkedIn. So what I believe that you need to take various brand elements from your own brand trajectory. Now, when I say trajectory, you need to sit with your management team, you need to sit with your marketing team, you need to identify that what kind of trajectory you belong to for your particular brand. Just try to identify certain elements from it. And uh, what you need to do that you have to showcase more of your brand and not the products. People would love to see your brand. See, people already know about your product. If you are uh, every day through your videos, if you are going to show your brand, uh, show your products rather only, then people one day will, will start feeling bored. Yeah, you can create certain creative elements. You can add certain creativity to your videos, specifically on Instagram Reels. But even people will get bored of that. So why not to talk about the brand rather than products and the services? So I believe that you can start by from your office itself, from the people with whom you are working and just uh, you know come out with some awesome uh, topics. Just go and talk to your people, the people who are working with you, the people who are the face of your company and who are the first point connection with your say uh, with your customers. Why not you bring them in the front of the camera and start talking with them and just create certain videos and start putting it on your social media. As, as Adair said that you can always use your mobile phone. You don't need anything else, right? And the, the, the kind of applications that Ami has suggested to you, you can use such applications, you can edit your own video and then you can post it on your different social media. So uh, don't be run behind the volume, don't run behind the quantity of the video. Focus on the quality of the video, the topics itself, and consistency is the key. If you really want to win, I think consistency will be very helpful to you. And uh, I believe that uh, you can definitely do wonders with video marketing. Yes, brother. Thank you so much, Bhautik. You have really enlightened us with uh, no, very much uh, good pointers for the video content for YouTube and as well as Reels. And we do observe not only a person as a content creator is observed inside Reel and you, uh, on YouTube, uh, I mean videos and uh, Reels on Instagram, even the surroundings of the person and the video creator it becomes a product or a business for them, be it a small dog, cat, or even a complete uh, physical product we see they have purchased from a store. So it is really not necessary for a person to be, you know, very much, very much a face to face to the video. If they want to create a great content, they do have many, many things surrounding them. And we all attendees keep looking forward to you and other speakers every now and then for many, many of the solution. 
and today's discussion has enlightened us with many ways for video marketing. Before concluding this event, I would thank all our speakers. It was such an enlightening seminar. So much to gain from such eminent speakers. It's less to just end the event on a thank you note. Your wise words have given us so much more to understand that what we see on social media platforms on everyday routine. Our community, iVipnan community is really pleased and thankful for your presence today. Once again, thank you for sparing time for us. I am happy to announce that Social Media Day Gujarat 2022 turned into a great success, all because of our beautiful and enthusiast attendees here. Here by myself, Palak Mandyan Pujara, conclude the event. And for everyone's information, the recording will soon be uploaded on Ivipnan's YouTube channel. And all the questions asked by attendees today will be answered and delivered to you in the form of ebook. Even if after the event you uh, get to you know uh, get some questions in your head you can definitely mail on the ivy plans help id and last but not the least thank you all supporters and partners for making and, and uh, taking this event to a new heights of success thank you so much everyone it was lovely discussing about the video marketing today good night thank you so much thank you so much Adet. thank you so much Ami, and thank you so much all the attendees for Thank you. Thank you so much, everyone. God bless. Thank you. A pleasure. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.